Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a database from scratch and how you connect it in ASP.NET Core. So first of all, let's set up a brand new project. Uh, I will simply type in ASP.NET right here and it will show up an ASP.NET Core web application for this example, we want to take that one because it really starts without any kind of authorization, authentication or whatever. And we can simply call it like create DB from scratch, whatever you want to name it, I will place it on the desktop. Next for the configuration, I want to take a .NET 7 project and I don't want to have any kind of authentication so that we really, as I said, start from scratch. Now I will just hit create. Just for your interest, we also got the content of this video written as in article on our website at our blog right it's a step-by-step -step guide so if you want to follow along in the easiest way possible you can find the link for that article in the description below alrighty so our project is now successfully created and the first thing that we want to do is we want to install all necessary NuGet packages so click on tools go to NuGet package manager open up the uh, manage NuGet packages for solution window then click on browse on the top left corner. Don't click on install. And let's search for Microsoft.EntityFramework.Core. Now scroll up until you really see Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Well, my screen resolution is zoomed in so that you can follow along nicely. But unfortunately, every time I search something here, it's like the first one is skipped and that's why I have to scroll up. Now click on that one, select your project and click on install. I need to scroll down for that, but that should be visible for you. Simply accept it. Well, this is really Entity Framework Core with all of the core features that we need as an object database mapper, as you can see it right here. But we're not done yet. We need to create migrations and we need to have some tools provided from Entity Framework so that we can really create the database and well, execute our migrations. I will come to migrations just in a second. So what we want to do is search for tools so microsoft entity framework core dot tools go ahead and install that package too and afterwards we need to install one more which is really depending or it depends on whatever database you are using for most of you guys are using sql server which is fine right because it's like also installed once you install visual studio so what you want to do is you want to search for microsoft entity framework core and then we want to search for sql server but there are also packages for like, for example, SQLite. So if you don't use SQL Server, but SQLite, PostgreSQL or whatever, go ahead and search for your specific database provider. Now for me, it is SQL Server. So I will just select that one, scroll down again and hit install here. So now we got all packages installed just in a second. Exactly what we need. Well, at least the minimum stuff that we need to install to connect and create a database. Awesome. So. Next up, what we want to do is let me just first of all close that here and also that one. Um, we can we can save that, doesn't really matter. What we want to do is we want to create a brand new folder. We want to call that folder models because inside there we want to create our entity. Let's assume that we want to create a database and inside of that database we want to store students. So in that scenario, I want to right click on that model folder, create a new C -shop class I want to call it student and inside there I want to create well any kind of properties let's say three in total the first one will be prop tap tap int id now the second one will be prop tap tap string name it doesn't really matter what properties you enter here because that's just for demonstration the third one will be prop tap tap we make that a date time and we say something like enrollment date so enrollment date, there we go. Awesome. So that's our entity. We want to save students looking like that into our database. So in the end, the SQL database will have a table called students. Uh, we will have inside of that um, table, we will have a column called ID, which will be our primary key. We will have a column for the name and we will have a column for the date time. So this is why entity framework is called an object relational mapper, right? Now this, is just a C-Shop class, right? So right now there's really nothing going on regarding any kind of SQL, well, database creation. 
So what we want to do is we want to create a database context, our own database context. So inside of the model folder, again, create a new C-Shop class and there is a base class which we will use for inheritance. It's called DB context. So as I said, we use it for inheritance, our own database context, where we really specify what we want to have in our database. We will call it uh, school like that and then context. Awesome. So let's create that class. And as I said, the first thing that we want to do is we want to inherit it from DB context. Now, for sure, we have to use the Microsoft Entity Framework core namespace. This is why we installed the NuGet package at the very beginning. And now we are good to go to configure that context. But before we do that, let me tell you that we have an awesome course for you. It's called the C-Shop Progress Academy, and it teaches you everything you need to know about C-Shop to land a job, right? So we turn you into a job-ready developer, helping you to really land your first job. Take a look at the path that we have designed right here. So you are like a C-Shop developer, maybe you have some basic C-Shop knowledge. Inside of the C-Shop Progress Academy, the course, you will learn ASP.NET, Angular, RESTful API development, entity framework, SQL, software architecture, unit test, and we will even provide you some training on how you can really get started in your C-Sharp career. That's really awesome. So go ahead. You can find the link for that in the top right corner popping up right now or in the description below. Check it out. I can really highly recommend it. And I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest and best way, also the most affordable one, how you can progress as a C-Sharp developer. All right, now let's start configuring our context here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to add another property. Now, inside of our context, we want to specify what tables we want to have in our database. We have an entity called student. So in our database, we want to have a table called students, right? This is why we go ahead, public int, and we change int to student. So our entity class. And by the way, if you like this video, go ahead, give it a thumb up and subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss any upcoming videos if you are C-Ship interested. And then we want to name that one uh, students. Now, that itself for sure is like this one is a plural. So we have multiple students and student here is a single class. So that does not work. We need any kind of collection, right? Because we will have many students, not only one. And for that, we don't use a list. We don't use an array or a dictionary. No, we use a class called DB set just like that. And then we add the type. So this is how you can set up or define um, tables in your database, right? In your database context. DB set, then you provide the type student and then you give it a name students. Usually you want to do it like not the singular, not student. You want to do it like the plural students because you have multiple students in your database. Now, there are many ways on how you can continue configuring that. And I decided to stick uh, with the, well, easiest one. So what we do is we create a constructor here, write down CTOR. Now we got the school context. We don't have to write anything inside that constructor, but we have to provide the options, DB context options. There we go. Let's call them options. We have to provide those for our base context. So DB context here. So what you want to do is you want to pass that into the base constructor. This is required. If you do not add that one, well, Visual Studio will tell you to do so, right? So just for that kind of configuration. Well, the DB context options, you will see uh, where they're coming from just in a second, because now we have to set up our service, which well acts as our SQL uh, database provider or well, in total database provider. So what we want to do now is we want to close that here because we're done with that. Again, if you want to copy that code, just go click on that article, copy that code, try it on your own. And we want to go to our program.cs. Now, let me just close that window here so that we have a little bit more space. We are not interested in the app once it's built. Now, in that moment, we can well use routing, map razor pages and all of that. What we want to do is we want to modify or we want to add a service before the application is built. You can see in line 12 here, the application is built. Before the application is built, we can add services. So as you can see here, we got builder services dot add razor pages. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and call builder dot services. And we also want to add something and we want to add, well, our database connection, right? So, or well, the database context to be more specific on that. There is a method for it. It's called 
at db context. You can see we need to specify type. Well, good that we have just created our own context, right? So let's just add the school context right here. And now we have to configure it a little bit more. So open up parentheses, let's create an object, uh, an options object, there we go. And we wanna configure it. And inside here we wanna say options dot use SQL server. And inside of that method, we only have that use SQL server because we installed our SQL server NuGet package, right? Microsoft Entity Framework Core uh, SQL server. That's the NuGet package that you need to get access to this specific method. So use SQL server. And now we simply have to add a connection string. That's all we got to do. How do you get that connection string? Usually if you, for example, start an MVC application that uses authentication, you will uh, see in the app settings JSON, and you will see your connection string here. But right now, since we have no authentication and it's a clean from scratch web app, we don't have a connection string. So if you have a database provider installed, like for example, SQL Server, chances are that you also have SQL Server Management Studio. So there is a way to find out the connection string for every database provider. Now for me, you can see that if I want to connect to something, I can click on Connect Object Explorer, and this is my server name right here. So I'm going to copy that, just like that, and then I simply go into the Use SQL Server, and inside here I want to write down my connection string. Well, to be more specific, I for sure already created it, so I will just copy paste it over and then explain what exactly I did. Alrighty, so here's my connection string and it says server, right? There are so many templates out there for connection strings, so don't worry too much on that. Server equals to, now this is my server, right? It's my local server here. And then we got a database, schooldb. Now this one is not created, so I don't have a database right now inside of this server. So if I update that, you can see database is still empty. So there is no database yet and you don't need to create it because Entity Framework will create it automatically just in a second. Here, there is a little mistake, there we go. Database SchoolDB, so I provided that name and then I added trusted connection. And in my specific scenario, I need to make sure that I have trust certificate set to true too. But that's just because of my specific um, SQL server configuration. So this is the only thing that you really have to make sure to check up on your own how to set the um, the connection string, but that should not be too hard because, well, you will always get any kind of information just in a second if your uh, SQL server connection string is working or not once we start setting up migrations and trying to run them, which we will do right now. So we now set up our uh, database provider. We said we want to use an SQL server and we provided a connection string, which is pointing to an SQL server. So that's perfect. Now we're nearly done. Click on tools, go to NuGet package manager, package manager console, and let's add a migration. So a migration is like, well, if you're familiar with GitHub or Git in total, it's like a comet, right? So you make changes to a database and you want to keep track of it and then you can run it. So a migration itself is the way you describe how a database should change, but the migration itself does not change it. You have to run the migration. Right, so add migration, let's call it initial create. Let's hit enter, let's see if we are able to create a migration. Things are looking good right now, so build starting, that might take a while. And once done, you can see build succeeded and it will open up a file, a migration file in a second. There we go. On the right side, you can see a new folder called migrations. And here you can see an up method and a down method. I don't want to jump too much into detail. If you are interested in that, please just write it down into the comments below. I'm happy to create an entire video just about, uh, well, on the topic migrations. But just to keep it very short, the up method is like, you run that migration, how should the database change? And the down method is like, you can revert those changes. So you keep track of what do I need to remove? So migration basically consists of the changes that you make to a database. Hey, add something or if you removed something, for example, it will also be mentioned here so that you can really like um, using that migration, rebuild the structure of the database once you switch the system, for example. You can also downgrade the database again. Well, downgrade is not the correct word, but you can revert the changes. Awesome. Now, last thing that we need to do, those set our migrations, we want to go to the package manager console again. Now that we have our migration, 
I'm sorry, I will just open it up one more time. We will now run that migration and that will create a table inside of our SQL database. It will name the table students and it will add columns for ID, name and enrollment date. So now you should get the idea of what a migration is doing. Right now, we still do not have a database. So if I update here and go to uh, databases, you can see it's empty. But now let's execute all unexecuted migrations. So let's just call update database. That's another comment. And now all migrations which are left open, right? So which you haven't executed yet will now get executed. What happens now in that moment is right now, we will try to make a connection and our system will see, well, there is no database. So it will create a database now and then it will patch the database using the information provided inside of the um, migration. So you can now see inside of my connection string, trust certificate, as I've got it right here, trust certificate is an unknown keyword, but that's not a big thing. So I would just adjust it right now because the correct keyword is trust server certificate. There we go. Now let's add it. Let's rerun the update database command. And if everything works, we can see a database afterwards and a simple small word which says done. So let's just wait. It creates all the stuff. You can see that it's looking great. And now you can see done. And this is what you want to see, right? So if I now go to our uh, database right here, database, you can see our school DB. If I open that up, you can see the table and here inside the table just takes a while. You can see our students table. You got the migration history and inside the students table, we can see the columns ID name and enrollment date. And now you're good to go to, well, use your database, right? So from here on, it's more like, uh, take the context via dependency injection into any controller, into any, whatever you got, right? And then just place new objects basically into the school context students, right? This is entity framework. So what you want to do is like students dot add, right? Or insert or whatever system you created for your well CRUD operations. So yeah, that's it. Basically, this is how you can create and connect a database in ASP.NET Core entirely from scratch. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any videos. Give this video a thumb up and well, I know it does not stop, right? Go into the comment section. If you want to see any specific video on C Sharp, ASP or whatever you can dream of, just write it down. I'm super happy to create any video for you. And definitely make sure to check out our C Sharp Progress Academy. It's popping up at the top right corner right now, or you can find the link in the description below. You should definitely check it out. Trust me, we have helped so many students become better developers, land their job and so much more. It's definitely worth a look. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.